Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Do not skip the video because every question is very important. Before we start, please like and subscribe to support this channel to provide another new video for you. Thank you. Remember, this port is at security level 2. We discussed keys and the locking of spaces before arriving in port. Yes, we managed to find that missing key and repair the 40 lock. Yes, I know, but last night I noticed that some of the crew hadn't locked their cabins. Right. I'll have a word with them. Right. Before joining the vessel, I'd like to remind you that alcohol is strictly forbidden on board ship. Alcoholic drinks must not be brought onto the vessel, and any crew member found to be drunk will immediately be signed off and an investigation will take place. The same rules apply for the use of illegal drugs. Only drugs prescribed by the doctor can be brought onto the vessel. I'm sure none of you want to lose your jobs, do you? Okay, so don't take any chances. Have you ever had to give first aid to anyone? Only once, but it wasn't an injury from using chisels or tools or anything like that. One of my mates was shaving when his ship had a big swell. He lost his balance and he cut his neck quite badly. Well, what did you do? I heard him shout and rushed to see what the matter was. He was bleeding quite a lot and then he fainted. So I put a towel on the cut to stop the bleeding and then called for further assistance. We got him to hospital as soon as we docked that evening. He was okay, but he needed several stitches. Morning, Cook. How are you getting on? Good morning, Captain. I'm fine, thanks. A bit busy getting Christmas dinner ready for tonight. Sounds good. What are we having? Well, the first course will either be vegetable or chicken soup. Then, um, it'll be a choice of either fish or turkey for the main course. And, of course, we'll have Christmas pudding to finish with. Sounds good. Now, listen, some of the Russian crew have asked if you can prepare pancakes with caviar. It would be nice for them to have it for Christmas dinner, if possible. What to do, but, well, I'll see what I can manage. Thanks. There was a nasty pollution incident around here a month ago. Oh, yes. Wasn't that the big spill that spoiled some beaches at a tourist resort? No, you're thinking of the spill that happened off the coast of France. Oh, that's right. So you mean the incident when a ship cleaned out its tanks illegally? Is that the one? Yes. It happened just off the English coast around here. I remember when I was a cadet, I was on a vessel when the master dumped oily bilge water off the US coast. Really? What happened to him? Well, the company was fined about one million dollars. Wow. Have you ever rescued anybody from the sea? Yeah, I have. Last year I was chipping the rust off the port side of the deck when I heard somebody in the water crying for help. I looked over the side and saw a guy in the water not far from the ship. So I shouted, man overboard, and threw him a life boy, and I didn't take my eyes off him. Then we did a man overboard rescue. Luckily, he was okay. Have you heard the news? No, what? Another port state control inspector has just arrived on board. I thought the inspections were finished. I wonder if it was the man I saw on his way to the bridge. What did he look like? Well, he was really big with very broad shoulders. He had white hair and looked quite old. But did he have a beard? I think so, and he was wearing glasses. I don't want another accident like this to happen again. Did you make sure that motormen had the permit to work before starting the maintenance? Yes, of course, and I gave them clear instructions what they had to do. They're skilled motormen. So what job were they doing? They were changing the circuits and O-rings on the main engine rockers. So, how come they were scolded? Did they have their PPE on? They did, but they decided on their own to remove the thermometer pocket in the cooling water system to easy access to the rockers. They shouldn't have done it without my approval. 
So were you supervising them personally? Well, no. I was busy doing the weekly report. That's no excuse. It doesn't matter how experienced they are. Oh. They are watching them. You were really lucky they weren't badly burnt. What did you hear about the cook that was killed last week on the cargo vessel during mooring operations? Why was he doing that? Was it a one-off or an emergency or something? No, he was told that he had to help. Some companies expect that, though it's not officially contained in the management system and shouldn't really be part of a cook's job. But a cook isn't always going to argue with the master, is he? Well, if they expect cooks to help in the mooring operations, they need to be trained properly. Yes, that was the problem. He hadn't been given any proper instruction. Captain, can I uh, speak to you, please? I want to, to, to sign off as soon as possible. Why? What's the matter? Uh, I've received some, some bad news from, from home. My mom has been taken to, to hospital suddenly, and I'd like to be with her. She needs my help and, and support right now. Hmm. Well, I'll see what we can do. We're having a crew change soon anyway. Look, I'll contact the company and ask if they can get someone to replace you at the next port. Okay? Well, thank you, Captain. I really appreciate that. You know this port has a reputation for having the most beautiful women in the world. Yeah, my wife's gonna love that. You know what I've been fantasizing about ever since I knew we were coming here? What? A really good steak. I know a fantastic little restaurant near the port. Okay, steak then. Then let's go to a salsa club. There'll be a lot of attractive women there. Yeah, right. Attractive women with jealous partners. It's an early night for me. My salsa club days are over. There's a fabulous beach I want to visit here before we leave port. There should be time tomorrow. You know this port has a reputation for having the most beautiful women in the world. Yeah, my wife's gonna love that. You know what I've been fantasizing about ever since I knew we were coming here? What? A really good steak. I know a fantastic little restaurant near the port. Okay, steak then. Then let's go to a salsa club. There'll be a lot of attractive women there. Yeah, right. Attractive women with jealous partners. It's an early night for me. My salsa club days are over. There's a fabulous beach I want to visit here before we leave port. There should be time tomorrow. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is Adriatic Delta Echo 7216. Adriatic Delta Echo 7216. Adriatic Delta Echo 7216. My position bearing 021 degrees, distance 15.8 nautical miles, east of Isle of Polo. We have lost the deck overboard in position bearing 020 degrees. I didn't get much sleep last mm. night. Your coffin kept me awake. <coughs> mm. I can't seem to get rid of this chest infection. Yes, there is quite a lot of sickness. Mm. Apparently, the chief officer is in bed with violent stomach. inspectors come on board. I want to do some last minute checks. Make sure all the garbage is correctly segregated. Also, make sure the gangway is correctly rigged.
Sin Wawa. Captain, we have a fire alarm showing for starboard deck three. Is there a fire? We have a minor fire in the cabin. Report injured persons. Two injured persons with oh. minor injuries. Is a fire under control? Yes, the fire is out. When was the last time the fire extinguishers were checked? What's causing you to feel dizzy? What's causing you to feel dizzy? Where are the safe operation instructions? Where are your safety gloves? Are those two men really port state inspectors? Are those two men really port state inspectors? The vessel on fire is 230 miles. The vessel on fire is 230 miles. The length of this vessel is 1,024 feet. It says here that 24.9% of seafarers in our company come from Ukraine. It says here that 24.9% of seafarers in our company The top speed of this vessel is 24.8 knots. The top speed of this vessel is 24.8 knots. I had to pay $85.70. Excuse me, can you tell me where I can find the hospital? Yes, it's in Bridge Street. It's about five minutes away by taxi, or you can take the number 42 bus. That'll take about 15 minutes to get there. Can I walk there? Oh yeah, it's actually quicker than the bus, because you take a shortcut through the supermarket car park. You should get there in about 10 minutes. Right, Chief. We've just received your flight details. You're flying tomorrow by Lufthansa from London Heathrow to Frankfurt and then on to Mumbai. It's not an electronic ticket, OK? You need to pick up your tickets from the airline office in the city this afternoon. The agent will meet you in Mumbai airport and take you to your ship. OK, no problem. Do I need to pay for the tickets? No. The company has paid for them already. When you collect them, just tell them your name and take your passport with you. OK, that's fine. I've just had a look round the vessel, and you remember yesterday I commented on a few things. Yeah, I remember you said you found the ratings used a tin can as an ashtray. And there was a faulty gas meter, and not enough warning signs displayed. Yes, they've mostly been resolved, with the exception of the signs. Can you make sure that's sorted by tomorrow? Yeah, I'm on to it now. What's on the end of that heaving line? It's a metal ball, sir. What are you trying to do? Kill the linesman? Should I put a hook on the end instead? No! 
Don't you know how to make a monkey's fist? What is that, sir? It's the knot that you should know how to make. Have you ever had to put a fire out? Just a small one. It was when I was working on a dry cargo vessel three years ago. The motorman left a cigarette burning in the mess room while he went to get a coffee. But then he was called away to deal with the problem in the engine room. So he forgot about his cigarette and the fire broke out. Luckily, the fire wasn't too bad and we had it put out quickly. We were really lucky that no one was hurt. Okay, this is the second time in a row you've had problems with the drill. Hmm? The last time you couldn't find your immersion suit. And this time it took you too long to put it on. <laughs> How many minutes should it take you to don it? Um, two minutes, sir. Yes, exactly. How long do you think it took you? I don't know, sir. Well, I timed it, and it took you four minutes. That's not quick enough. Uh, have you got a bad back or something? No, sir. Right, next time I want you to see you done it in two minutes, okay? Yes, sir. Hi, Borislav. Hello, Ron. I haven't seen you for ages. How are you? Have a good time for a coffee? I wish I could, but I'm in a hurry. Maybe we could meet on Friday? Oh, sorry. I can't then. I'm flying out to my ship tomorrow. I'm going to the office now to sign a four-month contract. All right, so where's your ship now? She's in Amsterdam, offloading cargo. Okay, well, have a safe trip, and I'll see you when your contract finishes. Right, before joining the vessel, I'd like to remind you that alcohol is strictly forbidden on board ship. Alcoholic drinks must not be brought onto the vessel, and any crew member found to be drunk will immediately be signed off, and an investigation will take place. The same rules apply for the use of illegal drugs. Only drugs prescribed by the doctor can be brought onto the vessel. I'm sure none of you want to lose your jobs, do you? Okay, so don't take any chances. Okay, the bosun has asked us to find the nearest location of these five items on our safety checklist. What's on the list? Well, there's an iron station, a life raft, breathing apparatus, a first aid box, and a fire extinguisher. That's easy enough. Apart from the life raft, all the other items are in the passageway outside the mess room. I saw them this morning when I was on cleaning duty. So where's the nearest life raft? It's on the port side, just forward of the funnel and almost directly above us on the next deck. It's one of those 20-man inflatable rafts. Okay, I suggest we go and check it out, and then report back to the bosun with the completed list. So you've already had your induction tour, and today you need to make sure you have read through all the important safety procedures. Then tomorrow, We'll make sure you've got all the relevant extra PPE you need. So, how long do you think he's been on board? Not long. He must have got on in one of the ports in Kenya. Probably Mombasa. So, is he Kenyan? No, he said he was escaping persecution in Sudan, but we found papers on him that say he's Somalian. That's a bit of a headache to sort out. Yeah, we're stuck with him till we get to Tanzania, then we'll hand him over to the authorities. You know, this port has a reputation for having the most beautiful women in the world. Yeah, my wife's gonna love that. You know what I've been fantasizing about ever since I knew we were coming here? What? A really good steak. I know a fantastic little restaurant near the port. Okay, steak then. Then let's go to a salsa club. There'll be a lot of attractive women there. Yeah, right. Attractive women with jealous partners. It's an early night for me. My salsa club days are over. There's a fabulous beach I want to visit here before we leave port. There should be time tomorrow.
You know, over a quarter of a century ago, a vessel lost about 25,000 plastic ducks overboard in heavy weather. And you can still see them now floating around in places like Hawaii, South America and Australia. Yeah, I've also heard that about 100,000 cigarettes were lost overboard not long ago and then eaten by whales and other marine animals. Did you know that 10,000 containers are lost at sea every year? Yeah, there's so much garbage in the sea. It's seriously worrying. So, we've got TVs in hold number two and DVD players in hold number three. And what's in hold number four? We've got phones in there. Oh, I've just bought my son a drone. I said phones. The drones are in hold number one. Okay, right. So, can you give me all the forms? Oh, damn. I must have left them in one of the holds. Do you know which one? I know I had them on me when I was in hold number one, four and two. So, I must have left them in number three. Why aren't you happy with the loading? What do I need to take? What do I need to take? Where's the typhoon now? Why are you drinking so much water? Do you know how to do CPR? This vessel has a ballast water capacity of 1,300 meters cubed. There's a distress alert on channel 60. There's a distress alert on channel 60. This vessel was built in the year 2016. Our cargo is 97,682 tons of crude oil. Our cargo is 97,682 tons of crude oil. Those shipping containers weigh 8,256 pounds. Those shipping containers weigh 8,256 pounds. So, how was the course? Did you find it useful? Not really, no. Well, that's a bit of a waste. Sometimes the courses they send us on aren't always very relevant or the content can be out of date. It wasn't so much the course itself, it was the trainer. Hmm. I think some of these shore-based trainers can get out of touch with what life is really like at sea nowadays. Well, he was experienced enough, but he just never stopped talking. He didn't ask us any questions, even though we had a huge amount of experience between us. After a while, I just switched off and stopped listening. So, how was the course? Did you find it useful? Not really, no. Well, that's a bit of a waste. Sometimes the courses they send us on aren't always very relevant or the content can be out of date. It wasn't so much the course itself, it was the trainer. Hmm. 
I think some of these shore-based trainers can get out of touch with what life is really like at sea nowadays. Well, he was experienced enough, but he just never stopped talking. He didn't ask us any questions, even though we had a huge amount of experience between us. After a while, I just switched off and stopped listening. Right, Chief. We've just received your flight details. You're flying tomorrow by Lufthansa from London Heathrow to Frankfurt and then on to Mumbai. It's not an electronic ticket, OK? You need to pick up your tickets from the airline office in the city this afternoon. The agent will meet you in Mumbai airport and take you to your ship. OK, no problem. Do I need to pay for the tickets? No. The company has paid for them already. When you collect them, just tell them your name and take your passport with you. OK, that's fine. Right, Chief. We've just received your flight details. You're flying tomorrow by Lufthansa from London Heathrow to Frankfurt and then on to Mumbai. It's not an electronic ticket, OK? You need to pick up your tickets from the airline office in the city this afternoon. The agent will meet you in Mumbai airport and take you to your ship. OK, no problem. Do I need to pay for the tickets? No. The company has paid for them already. When you collect them, just tell them your name and take your passport with you. OK, that's fine. Morning. Anything to report? There's been a collision between two fishing boats, sir. It happened during the night about 120 nautical miles west of our present position. The Coast Guard has advised all shipping to stay clear of the area. Hmm. What about damage and casualties? No casualties, thank goodness, sir. But one of the vessels suffered bad hull damage, and rescue ships are hoping to tow her into port later today if the weather clears. Hello. I'd like to apply for a junior deck officer's position with your company. Okay. What grade is your certificate and where did you study? I graduated from the Maritime College last year and I have a junior watchkeeper's certificate. I've done two contracts as an AB, but during my last contract I received recommendations for promotion to third officer. So I'd like to apply for a junior officer's position, please. Okay. Please fill in this application form and then I'll need to make copies of all your documents. Okay, so I've seen the ship certificates, logbook and oil record book. Do you have a copy of the previous inspection report for me to look at? Yes, we just need to wait while the chief officer brings them in. In the meantime, I suggest you have a look at the crew certificates. Okay, so I've seen the ship certificates, logbook and oil record book. Do you have a copy of the previous inspection report for me to look at? Yes, we just need to wait while the chief officer brings them in. In the meantime, I suggest you have a look at the crew certificates. We have a problem. What's wrong? One of the exhaust ports on the starboard engine's overheating. Okay, what do you want to do? I'd like to shut down the starboard engine for a couple of hours so I can make some checks. Alright, let me check with the captain. I will get back to you in a few minutes. Thanks. What's the status of the clutch on the starboard windlass? Well, as you know, it was jumping out of gear for a while, but the crew have just finished the repair job. Ah, yes. I saw some spare parts being delivered to the ship at the last port of call. Yes, we couldn't do anything until we'd got them. But it's all sorted now. The engineer on watch noticed there was a smell of burning. Then he saw that smoke was coming from the grill area of the clutch guard, 
which activated a smoke detector positioned above the clutch. This set off the vessel's fire alarm. Two teams quickly arrived. They used dry powder and CO2 extinguishers in an attempt to put out the fire. But the fire was so intense and kept reigniting and continued to burn. So they stopped the second engine and they turned on the water fog firefighting system. It took a while, but finally they were able to put out the fire. The engineer on watch noticed there was a smell of burning. Then he saw that smoke was coming from the grill area of the clutch guard, which activated a smoke detector positioned above the clutch. This set off the vessel's fire alarm. Two teams quickly arrived. They used dry powder and CO2 extinguishers in an attempt to put out the fire. But the fire was so intense and kept reigniting and continued to burn. So they stopped the... Let me give you an example of a recent pirate attack. The ship had just crossed the South China Sea and was negotiating a busy strait around midnight. So it's possible the pirates boarded the ship unseen from one of the small vessels nearby. Anyway, five men entered the bridge and threatened the master. They were all carrying knives and they forced him to open the ship's safe. Well, the master had no choice, so the pirates were able to empty the safe and escape with $25,000 and some other valuables. I'm a bit worried about the cook. He's not drinking again, is he? I know he went through a difficult period after his wife left him and he suffered from depression, but he seems fine now. No, it's not that. But I think he could be smoking cannabis. What? Yeah, I'm sure I could smell it on him yesterday. <laughs> I know what that is, it's the herbal cigarettes he's smoking. What on earth is going on in here? There are nothing but hazards everywhere. What are all those wires doing under your bed? And is that an ashtray next to your bed? Yes, it is. And I can't believe that you actually have a toaster on top of your bed. You have some explaining to do. What on earth is going on in here? There are nothing but hazards everywhere. What are all those wires doing under your bed? And is that an ashtray next to your bed? Yes, it is. And I can't believe that you actually have a toaster on top of your bed. You've got a lot of different currencies there. What's that 50 note? That's a euro. And this 20 is a British pound note. Right. And what about that 100 note? That looks like a lot of money. <laughs> Not really. It's a Filipino peso. It's only worth a couple of dollars or so. You've got a lot of different currencies there. What's that 50 note? That's a euro. And this 20 is a British pound note. Right. And what about that 100 note? That looks like a lot of money. <laughs> Not really. It's a Filipino peso. It's only worth a couple of dollars or so. I don't know what's going on in that galley. Yes, I don't think that cook is going to last long. Did you hear what happened this morning? No, what? Well, somehow the toaster caught fire which set the alarms off. He wasn't around at the time. Then they found him in his cabin drinking whiskey. He said he was just having a small shot for his toothache. Well, I got him smoking on deck the other morning and he just threw his cigarette butt onto the deck without even putting it out. I think they're replacing him at the next port. We had a right carry on with that pilot just now. Why, what happened? Well, as soon as he got on board, he ordered the master to get him a coffee. The master was furious. Not only that, but he then asked the second officer to go and get him something to eat as he was hungry. She was not pleased. Then, when he was leaving and climbing down the pilot ladder, he started texting on his mobile, and one of the ABs had to shout at him to put it away. What an idiot. I'm surprised he hasn't fallen into the water before now. 
We had a right carry on with that pilot just now. Why, what happened? Well, as soon as he got on board, he ordered the master to get him a coffee. The master was furious. Not only that, but he then asked the second officer to go and get him something to eat as he was hungry. She was not pleased. Then, when he was leaving and climbing down the pilot ladder, he started texting on his mobile, and one of the ABs had to shout at him to put it away. What an idiot. I'm surprised he hasn't fallen into the water before now. So, how long do you think he's been on board? Not long. He must have got on in one of the ports in Kenya. Probably Mombasa. So, is he Kenyan? No, he said he was escaping persecution in Sudan, but we found papers on him that say he's Somalian. That's a bit of a headache to sort out. Yep. We're stuck with him till we get to Tanzania, then we'll hand him over to the authorities. So, how long do you think he's been on board? Not long. He must have got on in one of the ports in Kenya. Probably Mombasa. So, is he Kenyan? No, he said he was escaping persecution in Sudan, but we found papers on him that say he's Somalian. That's a bit of a headache to sort out. Yep. We're stuck with him till we get to Tanzania, then we'll hand him over to the authorities. When did you last have an enclosed space drill? When did you last have an enclosed space drill? Why are they searching the vessel? Why are you so worried about the chief engineer? Why are you so worried about the chief engineer? Have they managed to find any stowaways? Have they managed to find any stowaways? Where's the man overboard? It says here that 24.9% of seafarers in our company come from Ukraine. It says here that 24.9% of seafarers in our company come from Ukraine. The length of these shipping containers is 2.99 meters. The length of these shipping containers is 2.99 meters. There's a problem with the AC in my cabin. It's 41.2 degrees centigrade in there. There's a problem with the AC in my cabin. It's 41.2 degrees centigrade in there. Did you know that approximately 85% of marine pollution comes from the land? Did you know that approximately 85% of marine pollution comes from the land? I've just taken my temperature. It's 38.9 degrees centigrade. The Coast Guard reported today that two vessels collided in poor visibility in the Irish Sea. Two helicopters were called out from an RAF station in South Wales and another was requested from Scotland.
First, you bare the three wires so that about one centimetre of copper is exposed. You make the green wire about one centimetre longer than the blue and brown wires. That's right. Now insert the copper of the green wire into the earth terminal. Good. And now insert the brown wire into the terminal with the fuse. OK. Finally, insert the blue wire into the remaining neutral terminal. Now make sure all the screws are tight and reassemble the plug. First, you bear the three wires so that about one centimetre of copper is exposed. You make the green wire about one centimetre longer than the blue and brown wires. I've been told it's an inspection of our cabins every Sunday morning. Yeah, didn't you get that on your last ship? We sure did, including our personal lockers. Was that because of drugs or drink? Well, the main reason was because they found some missing cash in one of the lockers. Not mine, I should add. Have you noticed a difference in the knowledge of young officers over the last ten years? Well, I don't think they come with the same knowledge and professionalism as they used to. Do you think it's because kids are a bit more lazy and spoilt nowadays? Perhaps they just need a bit of discipline? No, there are still plenty of bright young motivated officers out there. Maybe it's the standard of training in the maritime academies? Maybe that needs improving? Well, I'm not sure you can say that. There are some really excellent academies and instructors out there. Well, I'm not sure how else you can improve the standard. Personally, I think the best way is to transfer knowledge from one generation of mariner to the next. Good mentoring, that's the solution as far as I'm concerned. So, make sure you wear your safety goggles when you do that job. By the way, do you know what the most common cause of eye accidents is? Um, I would guess welding, sir. Actually, that's the least common. Well, in that case, it's probably chemicals getting into the eye. You're getting warmer. That's number two on the list. But the main cause is particles getting into the eyes. Hi! Are you ready to order yet? Um, have you got a vegetarian menu? Uh, not really. We do a different seafood dish every day, though. Today we have grilled shrimp. Sorry, I don't eat much fish or seafood. Actually, I like shrimps, but they bring me out an allergy. Well, uh, what I could do is ask the chef to cook you a special vegetarian dish. What about a vegetable soup followed by a pasta with a spicy tomato sauce? That sounds fine. But could you make the tomato sauce without any spice, please? You see, when I eat chili or hot food, I always get a terrible stomachache. Sure, we can do that. Did you hear about the collision that took place here last month? No. Did it happen in heavy weather? No, it didn't. It was calm at the time. But the officer of the watch was sitting on the footrest of one of the chairs and wasn't keeping a proper lookout. So... Was all the bridge equipment operating correctly? Yeah, they were. He just missed seeing another vessel on his starboard bow. He thought there was one other vessel in the vicinity, but there were actually two. Horrible weather today, isn't it? Well, it may be bad now, but you mark my words. It'll be sunny and warm within three hours. Not according to the weather forecast. Listen, why do you think they call me William the Weatherman? <laughs> well, it could be because you're sweaty, wet and windy. Ah, oh, very funny. It's because my weather predictions are always right. Don't you know that oily rags must be put in a special closed container in the engine room? It is dangerous as it can cause a fire. I have told you about this before. I'm sorry, sir. We were going to pick them up, but then we noticed a crack in the low-pressure fuel pipe, and it took us quite a lot of time to stop the leakage. We'll collect them now. Mm. And what's this? Why are these tins here? Remember, no oil leak collecting tins, trays, or other temporary means of collection are allowed. Remove all these tins immediately. I'll be coming back to check in an hour. This is my first general cargo vessel. I've been on tankers for the last 10 years. Well, the best thing about this ship is the variety of jobs we get. 
What do you mean by that? We get to visit a wide variety of ports and we're, we're not always on any regular shipping routes. No two jobs seem the same. That sounds interesting. On my last job, I was usually travelling between the Arabian Gulf and China or Japan. Well, we get to visit many different ports in the Mediterranean and sometimes to Scandinavian countries. I'm looking forward to that. I see you have some photographs. Yeah, these were taken on the last voyage. Let me show them to you. This is my first general cargo vessel. I've been on tankers for the last 10 years. Well, the best thing about this ship is the variety of jobs we get. What do you mean by that? We get to visit a wide variety of ports and we're, we're not always on any regular shipping routes. No two jobs seem the same. That sounds interesting. On my last job, I was usually travelling between the Arabian Gulf and China or Japan. Well, we get to visit many different ports in the Mediterranean and sometimes to Scandinavian countries. I'm looking forward to that. I see you have some photographs. Yeah, these were taken on the last voyage. Let me show them to you. OK. Before the port state inspectors come on board, I want to do some last-minute checks. Make sure all the garbage is correctly segregated and colour-coded. Also, make sure the gangway is correctly rigged, including the safety net, as that's often the first thing they look at. And make sure the paint locker is clean, not like the last time, when there was spilt paint all over the place. OK. Before the port state inspectors come on board, I want to do some last-minute checks. Make sure all the garbage is correctly segregated and colour-coded. Also, make sure the gangway is correctly rigged, including the safety net, as that's often the first thing they look at. And make sure the paint locker is clean, not like the last time, when there was spilt paint all over the place. Captain, we have a fire alarm showing for starboard deck three. Is there a fire? We have a minor fire in the cabin of the fifth engineer. Report injured persons. Two injured persons with minor injuries. Is the fire under control? Yes, the fire is out. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Adriatic Delta Echo 7216. Adriatic Delta Echo 7216. Adriatic Delta Echo 7216. My position bearing 021 degrees, distance 15.8 nautical miles, east of Isle of Colo. We have lost cadet overboard in position bearing 020 degrees, distance 13.7 nautical miles, east of Isle of Colo. All vessels in vicinity assist with search. Mayday. Adriatic Delta Echo 7216, Adriatic Delta Echo 7216, Adriatic Delta Echo 7216. This is Alchemy Sierra Bravo 9421, Alchemy Sierra Bravo 9421, Alchemy Sierra Bravo 9421. You've got a lot of different currencies there. What's that 50 note? That's a euro. And this 20 is a British pound note. Right. And what about that 100 note? That looks like a lot of money. <laughs> Not really. It's a Filipino peso. It's only worth a couple of dollars or so. So, we've got TVs in hold number 2 and DVD players in hold number 3. And what's in hold number 4? We've got phones in there. Oh, I've just bought my son a drone. I said phones. Where's the permit to work? What are those lights over there? What are those lights over there?
Has anyone ever fallen off the pilot ladder? Where's the stowaway? How can we stop the pirates boarding? The vessel on fire is 197 miles off the South African coast. My date of birth is 5th November 1986. My date of birth is 5th November 1986. The ship's current course is 215 degrees. The shipping company head office is located at 312 Ocean View Road. Did you know that approximately 75% of marine pollution comes from the land? Hi, how was your watch? Any problems? Nothing serious. But about an hour ago there was an alarm in the control room that showed the water level was low in the diesel generator cooling system. But it didn't fall to the critical point. So did you add some water? Yes, but, but keep an eye on the water level during your watch. Okay, will do. A high-speed passenger Roro ferry had completed loading and was getting ready to leave her berth. As part of the departure routine, the crew began raising the aft ramps. The port ramp was in the process of being raised and had almost reached the fully stowed position when the lifting wire parted and the ramp fell back onto the link span. Luckily, on this occasion, no one was injured. A high-speed passenger Roro ferry had completed loading and was getting ready to leave her berth. As part of the departure routine, the crew began raising the aft ramps. The port ramp was in the process of being raised and had almost reached the fully stowed position when the lifting wire parted and the ramp fell back onto the link span. Luckily, on this occasion, no one was injured. Do you know how many emails I got today? How many? About 250. You're kidding! I wish I was. And do you know what makes me really mad? Let me guess. They're so long, you stop reading after a few seconds. Well, some of them are like that, but that's not the main problem. Uh, there are too many attachments. That can sometimes be a problem. Oh, I give up. What is it? It's the fact that I'm always being copied into emails that have nothing to do with me. They're irrelevant. So, what system operates on this ship? It's four hours on, then eight hours off. It's a lot safer that way and we're well rested. So, we have three watches, right? Yes, we have watches Alpha, Bravo and Charlie. On my last ship, it was six hours on and six hours off. You must have found that incredibly tiring. Well, believe it or not, I'd actually prefer four hours on and four hours off if I had the chance. You are kidding! Well, I suffer from insomnia and never sleep more than four hours in any case. So it suits me, to be honest. Q. 
Good morning. You're through to Marlins. How can I help you? Uh, hello. I'd uh, like to speak to Andy, please. I'm sorry. He's in a meeting at the moment. Can I put you through to Chris instead? Or would you like to leave a message? Uh, no. It's, it's okay, thanks. I'll call back later. When your plane gets in next Monday, a representative from our shipping agency will be there to meet you. You'll be holding up a sign. Look, that's not good enough. The last time I blew into Moscow, there were literally hundreds of agents holding up signs. It was impossible to find the agent. It took me an hour and a half to get through immigration. And I don't think he was even there when I finally reached arrivals. In the end, I had to get myself across Moscow in a taxi. How do I know the same thing won't happen again? Okay, what about if I describe him to you? <sighs> it's still not good enough when there are so many people. Okay, what about if I tell him to wait next to the money exchange rather than with the rest of the agents? Yes, that sounds a better arrangement. Guess how many years it takes for an aluminium can to degrade? Is it about 50 years? No, it's much longer than that. It's about 200 years. And what about plastic bottles? How long do you think they take? Oh, I don't know. They take 450 years, you know. Well, it would be the same for that bread you made yesterday, wouldn't it? I guess it would take about 450 years to degrade. Oh, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Guess how many years it takes for an aluminium can to degrade? Is it about 50 years? No, it's much longer than that. It's about 200 years. And what about plastic bottles? How long do you think they take? Oh, I don't know. They take 450 years, you know. Well, it would be the same for that bread you made yesterday, wouldn't it? I guess it would take about 450 years to degrade. Oh, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> A freight ferry had just left her berth when a member of the forward mooring team saw that a vehicle carrying hazardous cargo was leaking onto the foredeck. So he immediately reported it to the bridge and they evacuated the foredeck. Anyway, they turned off the ventilation system and two teams put on chemical suits and breathing apparatus. When they had a look at the vehicle, they saw that several drums had fallen over and spilt. So the teams diluted the chemical with large amounts of water, according to regulations. A freight ferry had just left her berth when a member of the forward mooring team saw that a vehicle carrying hazardous cargo was leaking onto the foredeck. So he immediately reported it to the bridge and they evacuated the foredeck. Anyway, they turned off the ventilation system and two teams put on chemical suits and breathing apparatus. When they had a look at the vehicle, they saw that several drums had fallen over and spilt. So the teams diluted the chemical with large amounts of water, according to regulations. I didn't get much sleep last night. Your coughing kept me awake. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I can't seem to get rid of this chest infection. Yes, there is quite a lot of sickness on board. Some of the ratings have a fever and high temperature. Apparently, the chief officer is in bed with violent stomach pains too. It's just as well we are coming into port. We need to see a doctor. I didn't get much sleep last night. Your coughing kept me awake. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I can't seem to get rid of this chest infection. 
Yes, there is quite a lot of sickness on board. Some of the ratings have a fever and high temperature. Apparently, the chief officer is in bed with violent stomach pains too. It's just as well we are coming into port. We need to see a doctor. It's really busy. Anything to report? Yes. This is one of the busiest areas. You have to really concentrate. These fishing vessels just don't seem to follow any rules. Hmm. I've got my eye on that one over there. He could well be a pirate skiff. What's that in the distance? It's an LNG tanker. They don't like them coming too close to the coast. There are a lot of restrictions. They're really strict. And there's so many overcrowded ferries in this vicinity. There was an accident involving one just last month. It capsized in rough seas. Luckily, there were a few container vessels that managed to save quite a few of the passengers. I don't know what's going on in that galley. Yes, I don't think that cook is going to last long. Did you hear what happened this morning? No, what? Well, somehow the toaster caught fire which set the alarms off. He wasn't around at the time, then they found him in his cabin drinking whiskey. He said he was just having a small shot for his toothache. Well, I got him smoking on deck the other morning and he just threw his cigarette butt onto the deck without even putting it out. I think they're replacing him at the next port. So, have you ever been involved in any collisions, sir? Well, I've had a few near misses over the years, but I've been really lucky and haven't ever hit anything. What about a fire on board? That's the one thing that scares me the most. Thankfully, that's one thing I haven't had to deal with. Oh yes, and I was on a vessel that grounded, but we were able to refloat at high tide. What about pirate attacks, sir? Not as yet. But we may well be dealing with that next week, when we sail through the Gulf of Aden. So, have you ever been involved in any collisions, sir? Well, I've had a few near misses over the years, but I've been really lucky and haven't ever hit anything. What about a fire on board? That's the one thing that scares me the most. Thankfully, that's one thing I haven't had to deal with. Oh yes, and I was on a vessel that grounded, but we were able to refloat at high tide. What about pirate attacks, sir? Not as yet, but we may well be dealing with that next week when we sail through the Gulf of Aden. What's your cargo? Who segregated the garbage? Who segregated the garbage? Have you segregated the garbage? Have you segregated the garbage? Look at them working aloft on that other vessel. 
Look at them working aloft on that other vessel. Why can't we go on deck? You need to call the shipping agent. His extension number is 4127. I'll give you my email. It's penton6170 at hotmail.com. I'll give you my email. It's penton6170 at hotmail.com. Did you know? that for every death, there are approximately 2,500 near misses at sea. Did you know that for every death, there are approximately 2,500 near misses at sea? The ship's current course is 180 degrees. This vessel was built in the year 2005. I need to visit the ship's agent this afternoon. Do you know where it is? It's actually not far from here. How many kilometers from the port is it? Is it within walking distance? It's more like a few hundred meters, very close to the port entry gates. Once you're outside the gates, you'll see the customs department office next to the fire station, and the ship's agent is directly opposite. So what do you think of the new master, then? Well, to be honest, I'm not so impressed. How old do you think he is? He can't be older than his early thirties. Well, I don't think his age is the problem. I suppose he seems intelligent enough. You and I have a huge amount of experience between us. But does he ever ask our opinion? Not really. Exactly. Have you ever had to give first aid to anyone? Only once, but it wasn't an injury from using chisels or tools or anything like that. One of my mates was shaving when his ship had a big swell. He lost his balance and he cut his neck quite badly. Well, what did you do? I heard him shout and rushed to see what the matter was. He was bleeding quite a lot and then he fainted. So I put a towel on the cut to stop the bleeding and then called for further assistance. We got him to hospital as soon as we docked that evening. He was OK, but he needed several stitches. In the course of your duties, there'll be times when you come across a problem which might appear very difficult to solve. Although your training will prepare you for many situations, it won't prepare you for every situation. So, if you come up against what looks like an impossible situation, I'd advise you to talk about it with your colleagues or your supervisor. There's a saying, a problem shared is a problem halved. Now, I'm aware that sometimes in different cultures it can be seen as a weakness to admit you don't know something, which can prevent you from asking for help. But I want you to remember one thing. No question is stupid. Hey, your hand's bleeding. 
I warned you about that bent screwdriver. <laughs> it wasn't a screwdriver. I cut it on the barbed wire we were using against pirate attacks. You're always cutting yourself, aren't you? No, I'm not always cutting myself. I've only cut myself once, and that was over a week ago when I was shaving. Why is the cook pouring vodka on the deck? Is there something wrong with it, or is it some new method he's trying out to get rid of rust? Well, you know he's superstitious. Yes. Well, I told him it was good luck to pour wine on the deck, but he's run out of wine, so he's using vodka instead. Have you made this up or something? No, it's seafaring superstition. What a waste of good vodka! <coughs> Captain, I'm sorry, but I don't feel well. I've got a temperature and a sore throat and a cough. Yesterday I was working on the deck in the rain and the wind was freezing. My watch starts in an hour, but I don't think I'll be able to do it because I, I just can't concentrate. I've just got to lie down. Okay, you better go to your cabin. Have you got any medicine? Yes, I've already taken some. Thanks, Captain. <coughs> Hopefully I'll be okay tomorrow. I can't see the mirror. Where has it gone? It's not missing. Look, it's over there. Oh, yes, yeah, got it. But it's no use. Why? Has it gone rusty or something? No, it's cracked. You'll need to get it replaced. Um, Captain, we've got a bit of a problem. Oh, what is it? Uh, something's wrong with the echo sounder. I tried to switch it on, but it's not working. We've checked the power supply, but that's not a problem. Okay. I'll get in touch with the agent and ask him to arrange to have it repaired as soon as we arrive in port. I was reading a report on mooring operations. They cause a lot of accidents. Do you know when most of them occur? Mm, mooring in bad weather conditions? Well, a few are due to the weather. Okay, so I guess most have to be due to equipment failure? Yeah, actually, that's the least common cause. Apparently, the majority of mooring accidents are due to poor handling of ropes or wires. Mm, yes, that makes sense. What's the wind speed now? It's 25 knots. And when did you last check the weather forecast? Half an hour ago. They're predicting it'll increase to 35 knots over the next six hours. How far away from port? 45 nautical miles. ETA is 1325. The biggest problem on this vessel is the food. It's really good. Watch you don't overeat, or you'll get fat like me. There is a gym on board, but a lot of the equipment is old and not that great. It could do with being replaced. But the most important thing you must do when you're working in the engine room is drink plenty of water and stay hydrated. The temperature can reach 45 degrees centigrade in here. Right, that's me off for a shower. I can smell myself and I smell like a rotten whale carcass. What are the current weather conditions? We've got fog in the area, and there's a gale warning for later this afternoon with possible rough seas. Tomorrow looks like there'll be electrical storms and lightning strikes, but it should clear up as the week goes on, so we'll get some calmer and sunnier weather. That's good to know, as I'll be on leave then.
You know, over a quarter of a century ago, a vessel lost about 25,000 plastic ducks overboard in heavy weather. And you can still see them now floating around in places like Hawaii, South America and Australia. Yeah, I've also heard that about 100,000 cigarettes were lost overboard not long ago and then eaten by whales and other marine animals. Did you know that 10,000 containers are lost at sea every year? Yeah, there's so much garbage in the sea. It's seriously worrying. Oh no, where's my passport? You had it just now at immigration. Oh, it's okay. It's in my money belt. But where's my money? Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, it's okay. It's in my back pocket. Well, I wouldn't leave it there if I was you. Have you got the hotel booking? No, you've got it. No, I haven't. Is it in your bag? I don't think so. It's... Ah, it's here in my jacket pocket. Has anyone ever fallen off the pilot ladder? How did the Port State inspection go? Where's the chief engineer? Who segregated the garbage? Where's the large claw hammer? There's a problem with the AC in my cabin. It's 43.7 degrees centigrade in there. There's a problem with the AC in my cabin. It's 43.7 degrees centigrade in there. Did you know that approximately 75% of marine pollution comes from the land? My date of birth is 5th November 1986. My date of birth is 5th November 1986. Those shipping containers weigh 8,377 pounds. Those shipping containers weigh 8,377 pounds. It says on the itinerary that the ferry leaves at 1950 hours. It says on the itinerary that the ferry leaves at 1950 hours. Hi guys, thanks for watching. 
Please like and subscribe to support this channel to provide another new video for you. And please share to your friends to help others. Thank you.